Good morning and welcome to our service. This is our photographer, the very, very professional uh, Karamia Studios. So I'll hand our photographer uh, the camera. So this morning we have a special topic and that is prayer. How to pray, when to pray, what do we say when we pray, what can we ask when we pray. How do we pray when we're alone? How do we pray when we have to pray in front of people? So through words and music and prayer, we'll be looking at something that's crucial to our faith to pray. We have also uh, music coming along from Janet Ferguson. And then Andrew will do the Bendeloch church organ, which is very special. And at the end, Christine from Connell will sing our last team. So please join us today. I've also invited um, Aileen Bunner to do the first message and then I will do the second message. So please join us today. It is lovely to, to have you here with us in spirit. Let us then sing our very first hymn. Long to serve and not to 
morning's reading is from Luke chapter 11. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me, the door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? Amen. Good morning. What good words and good advice on prayer that we have here. And I especially like that part where Jesus says to us, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock, and the door will be opened to you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Asking for something can be quite difficult, and asking for help, I have discovered over the years, is particularly difficult. I, In my work, I, I work with many families where Homestart will offer to give them support, but it can be very difficult for families to accept that support. They feel that perhaps they are being judged in some way. And recently a volunteer said to me, she has been shielding and up until now she has been the one who has been able to offer help to people. And she said to me that this has been quite a learning curve for her because for the first time in her life, she has been the one who has been receiving help and that she found that quite difficult to accept. But that same person always also gave me a lovely book. It's called The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse. And there was one part of that book that really struck me. And this is what it said. What is the bravest thing that you've ever said? Asked the boy. Help, said the horse. Imagine if we believed that asking for help was the bravest thing that we could do. It's not only difficult to ask for help from friends, from family, but how many of us find it difficult to ask God for help? Why do we struggle? to ask God for help. Jesus says, ask and it shall be given. But I sometimes think, are we afraid of asking because perhaps we know the answer? Perhaps the answer is that we have a role to play in getting what we ask for. Perhaps there's something that we must do or something that we must stop doing. But Jesus says to us quite clearly, ask and it shall be given. How wonderful, how truly wonderful is that? And then somebody will come along and say, but I have asked God for this. I have asked for my best friend to be healed. And it didn't happen. And many of us have asked for things of God and it hasn't happened. 
And we all know that people will say to us, well, it's not just about healing of the body, it's the healing of the soul or the understanding of things and acceptance. But that's very difficult for those of us who lose someone we love when we have prayed so hard that they may be cured. And that's one of the challenges of having faith in God and knowing that whatever happens to us, whatever happens to the people we love, whatever is happening in the world today, and we are surrounded by pain and suffering in this time of COVID-19. But God has a plan and the day will come when we know truly that God has answered and given us what we have needed. Amen. When you study to become a minister, you, you learn a lot of things. You have books and books and books and years and years of study. But one thing that they don't really teach you at university is how to pray. Why don't they do that with ministers? I, I think simply because 
it's not something you can teach somebody. It's not something that you can learn in a book. And I was troubled by that at the end of my sixth year, just before I finished my studies, I realized I've learned so much about everything. And that was exciting. But to go up, to stand up in a church and to pray before a lot of people is going to be tough. It's one thing praying when you're on your own, but would it be that more difficult praying in front of people? So I was really troubled by it. At the end of the year I was going to go into the ministry and I still didn't know how to pray. I decided to ask my dad. Um, he had a wonderful way of opening his heart when he prayed. He, he was a shy kind of person, um, a private kind of person, but when he prayed in church there was something real. There was something flowing out of his heart that, that just connected to his congregation. And I knew he didn't learn that in books and he didn't learn that at university. So one day I decided to ask him, Dad, how does one pray? We were on holiday in Kruger Park in a wonderful camp, Willyfonts camp, elephant camp. Um, it's not the kind of rest camp that you go to if you want to see a lot of game, but it's one you go to when you want to chill and just relax. It's perched high on top of a hill with beautiful vistas over the African savannah. And there was one specific spot at the camp where you could sit on long benches and just look down at the river, the Willyfonts River below. There was a drop of about 100, 150 feet straight down and you can actually sit there and let the game and let old Africa come to you. Now that was fine during the day but my dad had the, the habit of going at night. When we all went to bed, um, he would go out and I knew he would go and sit at the lookout point in pitch darkness. And I always thought, but that's daft. How can he sit there for a few hours and not see any game? So when I asked him this question, Dad, you've got, you've got to help me. How do I pray, especially in front of people in church? He said one night, Willempe, come with me. So my mother and my brother Louis and my sister Esther went to bed and I went with my dad on his excursion into darkness and we went to the lookout point and there were a couple of long benches and he said you can sit here and I sat down and I was expecting a long talk but he went to the other side a few benches further and he was looking straight east. I was looking sort of south but anyway what can you see it's dark. So I sat there and I waited for him to begin his lecture or his talk but he kept quiet. He lit a quiet cigarette and I sat in absolute silence. So five minutes passed, ten minutes passed, fifteen minutes passed. My dad didn't speak so I began to sort of focus on what's in front of me. It wasn't just all dark. The stars just lit up the sky. Those of you who've seen an African night will know what I mean. Um, there's enough to look at. You'll never get bored. So I lost myself kind of in the starry landscape above. I could see the Milky Way. Um, I could see so far. And then my thoughts started to drift further and further. If this is the universe, where does it end? Does it end in a wall? What's the shape of the universe? A, a bubble? A flat surface? What's behind, beyond that which I could see? It was fascinating to tie, try and probe into darkness, but also let your mind probe about the origins of the universe. Where does it all come from? Who made it? And without planning it, my thoughts just drifted towards the Creator, God. And I started thinking about Him. And without any words, 
just in my thoughts I found myself in a way talking to him talking to God conversing without human speech um, I think you know what I mean my thoughts were just wrapped up and as I was sitting I, I felt that it's not just an output here there is an input somewhere beyond the stars there is something in a way talking to me in the sounds of silence I had a conversation with God without speaking to him without hearing a voice calling me Willem Willem there was something beyond words something that only those of you who've, who've lost themselves in somewhere in nature will, will understand anyway we we sat there for about three to four hours in absolute silence and then probably about two three in the morning my dad just coughed <clears throat> and he said um well um, uh, it's time to go to bed so we got up and we walked back in silence again and i said to my dad this dad tonight you taught me how to pray and he said one word yes amen come let us pray father as the darkness draws in you are the light in my heart as the air turns colder you are the warmth in my soul as the stars are revealed you renew my spirit as the moon shines softly i sense your voice in the wind as the sky falls silent i know i am held safe in your arms amen upon you and give you peace. Amen.